Hail. Leaders around the world are hailing the climate change agreement approved in Paris, but some, even those who believe climate change is happening, are skeptical. Time Warner Cable News reporter Tara Grimes explains why some believe it will have an impact and why others believe it won't. In what many world leaders are calling a monumental moment, nearly 200 nations approved an agreement at the United Nations Conference on Climate that is aimed at limiting average global warming by 2 degrees Celsius. Unlike previous conferences, the world's two largest developing countries, China and India, agreed to join in on the plan. With this agreement, there's that recognition that the developing world may still need to increase their emissions for a little bit before they cap and then decline. And so because of that, it enabled all of those countries to come to the table. But some critics say because the agreement is a collection of voluntary plans by each country and is non-binding, it will be difficult for it to make an impact. It's 31 pages long. It has no enforcement mechanism. It has no details, no specifics on what exactly they're going to do. So it's what they call an aspirational document, which means it talks about goals that they'd like to achieve in 50 years, but they really don't know how to get there. Cardinal is optimistic, however, and believes there are other ways of enforcement, including consumer demands. Enforcement could come in the form of a public outcry that leads to a boycott, which could influence your tourism revenue. So I, I think that, uh, that the old carrot and stick approach is not always the only answer. Part of the agreement also calls for developed countries to raise at least $100 billion annually to help developing countries. Cardinal says this could be used in enforcing the agreement for those countries. NoJ, however, sees a problem with this. Of course, this means taxes, and it means wealth transfer that will enrich the elites of those areas at the expense of American taxpayers. There are a lot of us who think that's not such a great idea. I think a lot of those are also going to be coming from private investors. We've seen, you know, the Gates, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation really step up and, and, and um, get a push from, from very wealthy philanthropists around clean energy and, and education. Um, so those dollars aren't going to be coming just from the public sector. Nations are expected to meet again in 2018 to assess progress. In 2020, they must declare new national targets and reevaluate them every five years thereafter. In Rochester, Tara Grimes, Time Warner Cable News.